all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel today we're going to be doing a potemkin analysis matchup breakdown uh we're going to be formatting the video a little differently uh before i did two zato players this time i'm gonna do one potemkin player and then we're gonna head over to the training room where i could break down some of potemkin's weakness in greater detail because my opponent he didn't actually do everything i wanted to show you uh he was pretty good so he was like a 1900 level potemkin player and he was very reserved so he didn't make some of the uh, mistakes that uh a weaker potemkin would have made so we're going to hop right into the analysis uh first we got to start with the opening so i'm pretty sure in this fight i had got spanked with the 5p from potemkin usually your greatest option to do is 5p because it beats potemkin's 5p it's just i was a little too slow it beats potemkin's 2p and it deals with the uh you know with the potemkin players they like to do a gimmick command grab right off the opening and it deals with forward and back mega fist it necessarily doesn't deal with forward and backwards mega fist but it covers those three options that potemkin got on the ground and if they do if the potemkin player do forward or back mega fist you could you could block the forward mega fist because you'll recover from the 5p by the time it hits you and you could punish it and if they do the backwards mega fist they you they would just be putting themselves closer to the corner because your ultimate goal and you what you're going to notice in this, this uh analysis and some of the examples i'll show you later is that eventually i will get the potemkin player to the corner via by themselves doing it because they do backwards mega fist a lot or i control the space and get them to the corner and that's usually where uh most of the fights will just take place when i'm fighting potemkin so that's pretty much what you want to do off the opening if they start to adapt to the 5p by doing like 6p that's when you just want to take a little step back and try to go for with punishes from now on because that means they're respecting your opening option and that's where you could go for other stuff when they starts to respect your open options so we're going to hop right into the analysis um Right here, I kind of acted too hasty and I kind of ran into the pop buster. And when, when you constantly get pop, uh, pop buster, you don't want to react to it too hastily. Sometimes it's just better to sit there and take it because you don't want to, you don't want to give your opponent information on what you would do afterwards. Cause then they would just use that against you later. So sometimes it's just better just to sit and see what the opponent does. That way you could use that information to counter it later. Uh huh. But I tell you, so when when uh, players like the um, they stagger their buttons, they don't use the buttons immediately. How they supposed to in a string? You can always punish the gaps with DP. All right, so my opponent tried to take his turn back with the super armor. That's when defensive stance really comes in handy in this one, because like I said, my opponent just gave me information. I, I did five each and I went immediately to defensive stance to punish any super armor shenanigans or forward or backward mega fist that he could have done. It just been countered by the defensive stance. Huh? Made it the burst. Did it again. So my opponent, he's trying to look for an opportunity to use his super armor. I'm shutting it down immediately. So once I get him to respect that my defensive stance is an option to deal with his super armor attacks, then I can start to do other things. I grabbed. <laughs> okay. It's no, it's no need to rush. It's no need to rush in, in Potemkin. Uh, just you just want to sit back and see what your opponent does. Uh, Leo actually controls the advantage of space in this game uh, with Potemkin. But Timken, he has really long normals, probably some of the best normals in the game. But the weakness in Potemkin's normals is that they they have 
like huge whiff recovery. <laughs> so you can actually just like stay out the space of his max range and just see what he does. And if he if he starts to whiff, you could punish it with five each. In this case, my opponent wasn't watching his tools, so I kind of just took them drawings. I said we traded. I was still moving too slow. There was no reason to break the blood that fast. I always catch people with the whiff. I always catch people with the whiff. <laughs> Just because I whiff that overhead. It never fails. This I've been getting people with that from the the day the game released. <laughs> just because you whiff an attack doesn't mean it's still your turn. Uh, so we could just gonna hop into the second uh, bench where I show you how I locked him down. Okay, he don't, he's he's playing a space game. He's actually playing the matchup very patiently, but he shouldn't be trying to throw out. Uh, attacks when I'm clearly outside of his range. Like I said, they got huge whiff recovery. He went and did it again, so I punished it with the 2D this time. And right, right here, you kind of just don't really want to go for anything. You kind of just want to force your pressure. Uh, like I said, the goal is to get the opponent to the corner. Once you get the opponent to the corner, that's when you can start to abuse his uh, weaknesses because he can't move forward because he has no run so he has to walk and if you want if he wants to get that space back he has to do a risk of some sorts either like Fort mega fist or trying to get back with you know his super armor he just got to do a risk and that's that's kind of what you want to do you just want to get him in the corner and abuse his weaknesses See? All right, so he tried to go for a really long range attack. Huge whiff recovery. In this case, when you're like conditioning somebody, like I just been hitting away at his his uh his block from that distance the whole time. So you're kind of conditioning your opponent to just sit there and block. You could you could every now and then, if you just want to run up while he's trying to patiently wait for your attacks, you every now and then just run up and go go, go do a throw. It's harmless. Sometimes you wouldn't want to do it if you don't see that type that that type of patience from your opponent, because you know like some some potential players they'll just they'll just do a back uh, mega fist regardless. So you don't want to do it on those type of players. But I see that my opponent was very patient and he was waiting for my attack, so I just ran up and grabbed. Mm -hmm. He wasn't he was a down block and he was trying to walk back and forth once I start seeing that from an opponent especially like Nagaryuki <laughs> when, they, when they don't have no dash or anything and they really can't really jump at you like that if they start walking back and forth I'll just try to uh, test their reactions by just jolting in there with 2D especially if I got meter to keep myself safe All right, we open them up. Mm -hmm, got him with a reset. Try to get him. Try to do him dirty. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. He tried to get back with a super armor. This time we jumped out. Like I said, just get him to the corner and we break down his defenses. All right, so next we're gonna go to the training room and I'm gonna, I'm gonna break down some of the stuff that I couldn't show you uh, with this opponent. Okay, so I don't wanna take up too much of your time in the training room. I'm gonna show you a few tricks that you can do um, in this matchup as far as like defense and offense. And then I'm gonna show you a, a few clips to reinforce what I'm saying to you. So as far as his like on defense, he really doesn't have a way to pressure you. Because you could punish the Mega Fist. You have counterplay to the Mega Fist. You have counterplay to slide in. And you have counterplay to the Hammerfall. Uh, so basically, if. Let's just see. They do Mega Fist off of like a block string. You just DP. It's a huge gap uh, for you to DP. Uh, same with slide hit. If they do slide hit, you still maintaining that DP charge. But if you, if you visibly. If you could react to them doing slide hit. You see him? Instead of pressing up a circle, you just press uh Damn, I said up a circle. If you press up H, <laughs> you could just do the uh DP. But if you see him go for slide hit, you could go for the 2D. And that would like punish that. So he doesn't have a really way to mix you up to stop you from doing the DP. Um actually I think you could just you can, yeah, you can just still DP the, the, the slide hit. And so if he try to cancel any type of special, you can just DP it. Uh, even Hammerfall. So if you go for Hammerfall, you can just still DP it. The moment where he try to connect his two fists is where his armor goes away. So you could just DP that and, and punish his Hammerfall. Uh, unless they have meter, I wouldn't try to do it, especially against a good player, because they might try to do like RC fast RC cancel into command grab. I can't really show it to you because I don't know how to do it. But they'll just do. Damn. Uh, yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm bot. I can't do it. <laughs> but they'll try to fast RC cancel into command grab when they had meter, and that's a little mix up with the, the Timken player. So I wouldn't try to go for DP at that point. I would just try to, you know, block it or when you see them RC cancel, just jump. <laughs> if you see, if you even see like the color purple, if you see the color purple, just jump. <laughs> Whatever they do can't be as bad as getting hit with the command grab, unless they got two bars. If they got two bars, you just got to make a guess at that point because you'll jump and then they'll go for the, 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 uh, the heavenly Potemkin busters. At that point, you just got to make a guess. But besides that, if they don't have no meter, you straight. You just counter with DP. Uh, another strategy I want to show you in the corner. So in the corner, it's, I know it could be annoying to deal with like Mega Fist, like backwards Mega Fist, because on Wake Up, hold on, let me make sure I got it. So in the corner, you try to throw out an attack and get punished. The good thing about this is that Leo doesn't have to worry about this. Because if you just, you can use 5S or 5H. If you do 5H on wake up, even if you are slightly late doing it to punish their wake up, like them waking up immediately, you can always go into defensive stance to cover you. Same. So if you just, little, even if you slightly off to punish the wake up, you're straight. You're fine. You don't even got to worry about timing it perfectly. Yeah. So if you're just slightly off punishing the wake up, you're fine. Uh, same with like backdash. It covers backdash too. So let me just show you. They backdash. You're straight. 5H has a lot of uh, active frames, so it could punish backdash. Even if you do it a little too soon and you miss. You could cover yourself with the um, the follow-up attack from defensive stance. So it, it pretty much beats all of um, Potemkin's wake-up options. He is forced to just block that 5H. If he don't, he's going to get punished. Oh, and another thing, his armor moves. So his armor moves. A supporter you know, like Hammerfall, the dealing with Hammerfall. Uh, I, I slide hit. It doesn't work on slide hit. 
Hammerfall loses to S projectile. Leo's projectile has two hits. So is this going to beat Hammerfall every time? Uh, another thing with slide hit. So this is for when you in defensive stance. When you're in defensive stance, you don't necessarily have to be in a rush. Shield just stops you from from getting hit with a uh, slide hit. And I believe I don't even know because I never did this before. But yeah, you could just <laughs> I didn't even I never even did that before. But that's something else you could do when they do slide hit is just to hop off the ground and hit them with the overhead. I've never did that before. <laughs> I just now thought about it. I don't know why I never thought about it until this moment. But that is something you can actually do. Matter of fact, I don't know if you've been a, a, a viewer of my channel for a while, you're going to remember this, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you all a clip. So if you're a long time viewer of my channel, you probably gonna remember this clip. This is an old clip. Oh, Jesus, this is like a year ago. Uh, uh, using the Millennium Eye to destroy my opponent. Uh, so let's just watch this real quick. And I, I, I think I figure out what some of the stuff I've like shown you now is relevant to this clip even a year ago. So, so yeah, my opponent, he, uh, he immediately went into, uh, doing like two P into like a uh, four mega fist counter with the DP. Too easy to react to. I remember you keep be able to do that. You can't do that no more. Mm. So yeah, that I, I, when I was playing every day, I was sharp. So I used to like, uh, shield their, um, I used to shield their, uh, freaking slide head. And I used to try to get the opponent to do like four mega fist or, um, hammer fall. So if they did hammer fall, I would like two K their, uh, two K the, uh, the armor, just in case if they tried to stop, like from doing like the hammer fall, just like the fake me out, I'll hit them with the two K. But if, if the two K hit the armor, then I will go into shield because then I know they're they're uh they're gonna do the uh, hammer fall attack. So I used to just do that to my opponent. I can't do that now. I don't play the game like that. So <laughs> mm, yeah, when mm. I was sharp, I was definitely doing stuff like this. Nope. I thought you see me going my defensive mm. stance. You still went for it. Uh huh. You can't do that no more. You gotta watch your toes, bruh. Burst. Mm, that's bad, bruh. Yeah, that's crazy. That's bad. And look, I used to fish. I can remember this. I used to fish for like them to do like uh backwards make a fist. So I just hit them with the two S and just wait. Showed the back fist. Yikes. Mm. <laughs> Dang, that was a double perfect. So. Yeah, that was crazy. So yeah, it, those are just some of the things you could do to just counter. Uh, well, let's see if it's some of these people. Yeah. Oh, Jet Miss, Jet Miss, man, shout out to Jet Miss. He's been watching my channel from day one. Yeah, but those are some of the things you could do. Some of the things you could do in this matchup. All right, so we're gonna head back to the training room, and then I'm I just want to hammer down how important uh, space plays a role in this matchup, and then I'm gonna show you some clips that reinforces that idea. So your overall game plan for this matchup is to migrate Potemkin into the corner. Now, the good thing about this is that you'll have Potemkin players that will just put themselves in the corner by doing backwards mega fist. <laughs> now. Potemkin, he has range issues. <laughs> he has no dash. So you could easily exploit this by finding the sweet spot. And the sweet spot for this matchup is right out of side Potemkin's 5H range. Now, right here, right there is the sweet spot. Now, Potemkin, he has probably the best normals in the game but he can't use them to the full capabilities because he has no dash. <laughs> so he can't control space as well as others. <laughs> and this is where it comes in staying in a sweet spot because one, you got, if they do uh, five H, he has slow recovery. 
So you could kind of just punish him if he if he was to try to throw out a button. Two, you're just outside of that mega fist range. So if he if he goes for four mega fists, you kind of just want to dash up. <laughs> you just want to dash up. If he do backwards mega fists, you still just want to dash up. It's very little things in this matchup that can make a world of difference. It's the very simple things. Now dashing up. It's just you gaining space. He's putting himself in the corner. If he does four mega fists, you punish the four mega fists, or you you do a little block string. You could push him back. Either or, you could punish him and you could land two three success, which gives you pretty decent corner carry. Or if they do backwards mega fists, you're just gaining that space. You're not giving it back. Once he does four, once he does backwards mega fists, you moving up, and then you're pressuring him until he eventually gets into the corner. Just little things like that in the matchup can make a difference. So just to uh, recap, backwards make a fist, dash up, backwards make a fist, dash up. You won't be able to punish him with 5H, but you can still pressure him. <laughs> so they're, 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 they're essentially just giving up space and real estate. And right here, you just, once you get in the corner, you just oppress him. That's it, simple as that. Uh, that's that's the game plan you want to have when you're fighting Potemkin. All right, now we're going to like hop into some clips where I can show you greater examples. Here we got another clip where I'm just showing you how important spacing is. Hmm? I think I'm in with the, uh, it's 2D. All right, here we go. We migrate him into the corner right there this is why switching up your timing is so important you got players like potemkin who would try to uh punish your buttons with mega fist which it doesn't necessarily work because if they visually wait for you to do five h it's already too late <laughs> if they if they visually wait for you to do five h it's too late <laughs> there's no punishing it at that point because you could just go into defensive stance and cover yourself and punish them I wasn't even trying to punish that and it got punished. <laughs> Look, patience, patiently waiting. <laughs> Throw off a particular player by switching up your timing. <laughs> you don't need to attack as soon as you possibly can. Not in this matchup. <laughs> And this matchup is all right to just like, you know, let me just see what you want to do first before I throw out a button. Cause he can't control that space right there. You control that space. <laughs> As you just seen, he tried to throw out a button. He got punished. If he would have did backwards, make a fist, he, he, you would just been staring at him. It's nothing he really could do in this position. Just another solid game is showing you how spacing is key in the matchup and showing you how you could deal with mega fist using the defensive stance all right we into the third clip this is just the hammer home how important spacing is mm -hmm. he tried to press a button i didn't attack immediately Just a very solid lame game. Back dashing over the hammerhead. Or is it slide head? I don't know. Not a Potemkin player. <laughs> right there. I seen that he did hammer fall. I immediately went into RC. That's how you deal with the armor. Slide head, you could back dash it. Another cool thing I'm gonna show you in a second. I don't wanna show you right now. How to deal with slide head. It's another move you could do right here. <laughs> I didn't know if it was coming up next, but right here, 2D is the only move that <laughs> this hops over. I'm not, I can't stress it. I, I remember in the beginning of the game where they said it could uh, beat out lows. This is the only move it really beats out lows. 
I never get to use this to beat out Lowe's. This is one of the matchups that I get to beat out Lowe's with. And and that's one way you can uh, deal with slide hit and potentially get like a heavy projectile out and go for like potential mixes. I don't know what that last move by my opponent did, but yeah, that's spacing is key. And I'm and along the way, I'm showing you how to deal with certain specials. <laughs> All right, so here's another example of me showing you how to deal with slide head. Um, right here, I was just I was actually fishing for it, actually. So I would like I, I really was just waiting for him to do it. So right here, I'll dash up because I thought he was going to do slide hit, but he, he didn't do it. But I gained that space back. He did it again. He did 5H again. This time I dashed up. I seen that he did the slide hit. That's when I popped off the 2D. Okay, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the video. If you got any comments or questions or concerns down below, let me know. And I'm going to see you on the next video. Peace.